Hello everyone, it's 30th of June, I'm going to do an update from the garden today. Um, weather's not great but it's not raining. It's been raining the last few days um, so it's dry today so I thought I'd come out and do a little video to show you where things are up to in the garden. So we'll have a look first at something I've uh, printed printed out that I found online You know, regarding the um, potatoes from the last video from the allotment with them splitting. So um, I've done a little bit of research about it and um, I'll, show, I'll show you what I've come across anyway. Bring you down here. So I had a look on the uh, potato database, and um, you can search your variety out. Obviously, this is Casablanca. I've printed it out for every variety, you know, that I'm growing or I usually grow. It tells you a little br bit briefly about the, you know, the actual potato itself. It gives you a couple of Im images, you know, of the flowers and the potato. And it's like um, characteristics, you know, it's short oval, colour of skin, if it's creamy or, you know, starchy or flowery. Um, height of plants, short to medium. Colour of flowers. The bottom here gives you a, a resistance to damage, uh, pests and diseases. It's a scoring of zero, low, nine's high. Bruising is four, when we come to splitting, it's seven. So it has got a fairly high resistance to splitting. So the only thing I can come, you know, think of it, it's down to the weather. That um, the ground went dry, and then it had a right good dose of water, and it's it swelled them up because obviously they've gone into sort of a dormant growth when it's dried out, and then all of a sudden a big load of rain comes down, and they just they grow sort of faster than they can expand the outer skin, which causes them to split. So. I am in some ways expecting a lot of my potatoes to be split, the other varieties as well. But if it's mainly this, and uh, if it's mainly the Casablanca then it proves this isn't really gospel. So I've uh, got one here for King Edwards. Same for that, you know, it's uh, bruising, splitting's five. Uh, this is here, you know, all the oval long, it's colour of flesh, creamy, um, height, uh, does it give you a height? Tall, well they're not kidding there, I'll just, uh, I'll show you them now. Well I'm just short of six foot and uh, as you can see, they're uh, they're almost that. Obviously, they're in pots as well, but I know they are. T I've known they are tall, but this is really tall. It's like trying to keep them back, you know, trying to keep tame them back in that. So they're a nightmare to to water. Obviously, if it's been raining, you still have to water because the rain doesn't get down to the pot. So I just use the, um, the watering can with the, the rose taken off and shove it straight in. And they roughly get about four or five litres of water per pot, you know, every few days. Um, I, just, I just try and shake the pot a little bit and if it rocks about, I think it's running dry. Because I don't want to flood them out. You know, the sending shoots out lower down that look a bit manky. But, you know, see how we go with them. Um, right, we'll have a look around the rest of the garden. Uh, I'll go out back here first. These are some that I've tested in my own compost. There's a Navan and an Orla. Uh, can't remember which is which. I think this is the Navan, this one. More lettuce that's just dumped down here, but uh, be harvesting them. <coughs> look in the little greenhouse. These cucumbers have done nothing but sulk. They've taken ages to actually start growing. And this last week, they've just sort of started to, to decide to send out a green top because they have been getting a bit of bugs on them. But I think it's because they're slightly shaded from the sun because of the King Edwards. They are um, struggling to get going a bit, but you know, we've got cucumbers started. And this was a, a spare one that I had that I've just put in a pot and that's started climbing now. Slugs have been at it, obviously. Uh, 
this is a Kelsey onion that I grew last year that I fired to seed. They're opening out now. I'll hopefully get some seeds off that. Cactus in the corner. If, you, if it's any you know used to you, the, the actual variety is um, Burbank spineless. And when I harvested me Charlotte potatoes the other week from the uh, the blighted compost from blighted plants that I used to you know that I grew last year, and these were the original sea potatoes, and they fired again. So they're going to get replanted in a week or so and see if I can get a second crop off the same sea potato. So uh, that should be interesting to find out. Look around here, this is a parsnip challenge. One of the tags, oh no, it's, uh, I thought one of my labels had come out. Um, they're growing. They're not really rocky, I'll say they are quite shaded here. But uh, this one's quite skinny, that one's quite chunky. That's a pinched head at the back. What's this one? Uh, that's the long sprout. Pull this tag out. Curly long sprout. I can't remember which one it was now. I put the stones in. Can't remember. I'll say I'll have to use the video myself when I've actually put these in um, to go off which one was what. But uh, they won't be liking it in there. You try and push your finger in, it's hard to even get your finger in, so they're definitely not going to be a Take it in our straight route. French climbing beans that were leftovers have, uh, you know, they've started to climb. It's a bit more sheltered here than it is at the allotment, and uh, big bean at the bottom there. So keep an eye on them and uh, start picking soon. We'll start off rather at the back here because it's a job to walk in between us now. I've been putting strings up to try and hold things up. Parsnips. Ladybird down. And there's quite a few ladybirds come about recently, so I think you know that there are actually a lot of bugs about. You know, so they because I usually go off the sand. I've got a lot of ladybirds coming in all of a sudden, then I've got nuisance insects as well, which I know I have because they're affecting my carrots a bit. Leeks I've strung up because uh, I had some cats on here the other day that were decided to have a fight, and they, uh, they started bashing all my leeks about, so. I've put a couple of strings down each side to hold them up. The subarctic plenty tomatoes, um, stacks of flowers on them, and I think deep within it somewhere, it's hard to tell, you know, until they actually colour. But uh, I don't know if you can see that tomato just there that's set. They always do set a bit later, but this will be right for them. It's a dead little sturdy thing, this. Like a little hedgerow. I mean, they're great for you know outdoors. If you've not got much room, you just stick like I do like them in a in a row. You know, of at least three plants, like in a little block. They do all right. But some uh, on Dave, same as at the allotment. Um, harvested loads off that like yesterday. This is uh, Mazur. This is one I'm definitely growing next year. I've been picking this for ages now and I just keep taking the outer leads and it's not gone to seed yet. You know, so when these fall, this, these are some I harvested yesterday, I took the outer bits, you can see it's nice creamy colour there, so there's no bitterness. I say it's it's standing well, but the thing is there's too many of them. Um, so I don't need to do as many lettuce next year, that's for sure. Not, not for my consumption anyway. Garlic. No signs of rust. A bit pale, so I think rust is on its way. You know, because it's me, ones at the allotment went did that. But I might give them a bit of a magnesium feed or something. But the carrots. Uh, tops are wilting down. And I find these, I'm not sure what they are. Like little, I think they're like a, a scale, I think they call them. Little tiny bug. You know, and they just sort of nestle on the leaves, like well, the white things. So I'm going to spray these after, because they're not going to be far off pulling actually. Because I did pull one yesterday, and it was um, it was all right. A different coloured ladybird there. But I'll leave him be. He's obviously uh, down there to do a job. 
Um, what else we got? So brown shallots, a bit topply and whatnot, but they're old in their own. Uh, Kelsey onions. I think I've had one or two more go to seed. I've got one. I spot before. It's just, it's just starting. But I've still got a few that haven't gone to seed. So I'm not, I'm not looking after these at all now. I'm just leaving them to their own device. You know, I'm going to start harvesting some soon. That uh, these that have gone to seed already. I'll snap the spike off. I'll start using them soon. Uh, broccoli. Been taking some side shoots. Um, just just to last until you know I've got some else to put in. Cauliflower. I've had a look. Yeah, there's a small curd on this one that's about three, four inches at the moment. So uh, I don't know. How, I've, I've never grown this clapton before. I usually grow avalanche, but I couldn't get all any seeds. An avalanche ends up massive, you know. It's any anywhere between a, th a three, three and a five pound curd. You know, it's a good curd on the avalanche, but I just could not find seeds this year. Uh, got some buckets here. So on some carrots. Can't remember the name. Uh, I'll put it in the description. I've not grown them before, but you, they're a late, late sowing variety. Sweet candle. You know, these are okay, but well, it's starting to get some scale things on these. They have had them earlier on, um, but they seem okay. That's just that other parsnip that had a load of aphids on it the other day, so I brushed them off and it's opening out again. Just trying to get out of here without falling over. A couple of tubs here with some sugar snacks, carrots on. This one's got mainly, it's like a sandy, sorry, a lot of sand in this. Um, but I've been, I've been picking a few, I mean, I've had some right mutated ones, but there's been a few decent ones. You know, they're, they're all right. You usually tell them they'll look mutated because you have to give them a right good tug to get them out. But, uh, you know, out of it, I mean, it's, it's, hit, it's hit the bottom, that's all that is, you know, but it's probably, I don't know how old that is. Um, well, 40, 50 days, something like that. So I'll just shove that uh, down there out of the way for a moment. Have a look around the back here at the uh, compost heap there. Tell what I was doing last night. Podding peas. I know you can save the pods, you know, for other stuff, but I just mounted it on because I like to get my compost out. It's 40 degrees at the moment. Uh, these have started to put some tops on now, getting a bit bigger. Um, so these have had, you know, alright, pasting off some as well, so this boy's it's trying to, but they'll not get big, these ones. You know, I don't know, I, I don't know about the back ones, how they'll do. Just trying to keep them wet so I don't get a big split on them again. Uh, gooseberry bushes. Start, I've, well, I'm not going to say start harvesting, I've been harvesting, not to take in, but while I'm out here, I end up troughing my face on them. Um, yeah, I do like these. God knows what the variety is. The tag's in there somewhere on one of them. Well, I'd, so I don't want to put me on in there because it's full of spines. Red currant and black currant bushes that were, I didn't know what they were until this season. You know, there's berries on them. And there's berries on these here. But the thing is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of them because they're taking up room, and to be honest, I'm not over keen on them. Um, if I had loads of room, yeah, I'd, I'd have a few dotted about, but I could grow something else in that space. These strawberries are just some I got sent. I'm just running them off now. I'm going to get some runners this year off these. Can't remember the variety I found. Um, it's either flamenco or vibrant or something, I think they're called. Potato peel challenge. This one is a Casablanca that got horrendously dripped on in the greenhouse. Started to, well both these did, these small ones. Uh, it started to send up a new tip now. Not expecting much from these at all, but the Navan, I've, I've had to support it and bring it out to try and get more light because it's gone all leggy and spindly, but it doesn't look great down there, but it's not blight or anything. Um, but it's got flowers on, so there should be something going on in there. So Navan's a main cropper, so uh, 
not a seed potato either. You know, it, it come from a farmer's shop where I bought a sack of spuds. And there was a few, with some, you know, they were going a bit soft, so I thought, well, I'll use them. Uh, right, what else? Oh, I did, I did say in a comment a while ago, on, well, not that long ago, I have this holly bush. <clears throat> it's been moved that many times in its life, but actually, that was a cutting I took when I was seven years old. And uh, still, still going now, you know, it's 34 years later and it's still... So as a, you know, sometimes you think, oh, it's in the way, I'll get rid of it, but I think, no, I'll always keep that. It reminds me of, I can remember, you know, when I got it in this little woodland at the back of an house my dad was working on. So it has, it has some memories attached to it. These are some uh, Pentland crowns. If you remember right, these were originally what I grew me rocket potatoes in. And then straight away I planted some Pentlands. That was the first um, one I harvested, this one here. And then obviously these two I did the same day. And then they went in, but were quite healthy. I have actually started spraying these for blight as well. Because um, I've had loads of the things from Blight Watch saying, you know, it's it's up and it's airborne. You know, in this area. And these charlots I put in in the last video um, started to peek through. I'll have a look in the polytunnel now. I can't really. Oh, I've got these. These are them well sunflowers. I've got one at the allotment, two here. You know, so they're a nice little compact plant. You get loads of, loads of heads on. I mean, that one's died back now, but more heads starting. It ends up with loads of heads all over it. Basil, something's been enjoying. But uh, still growing all right. Some more spring onions in a tray down there. Tomatoes. <coughs> Everything seems to be doing okay. These sun golds, I've never grown up before, but good God, they're a bendy plant. <laughs> Trying to get them to go nice and straight, they're all bendy and whatnot. Oh, a little sucker there, get rid of that. Don't want them. Um, plenty of tomatoes, you know, that are, that are all set in now. So, I mean, it's like I've got these, um, like mini bell pepper plants, these. Usually I'd do them in bigger pots, but these are only three litre pots. But the roots haven't started to appear at the bottom yet, so they're not struggling for space. So I'm just going to leave them in this, I think. But you see, I've got a pepper starting there. Like I say, they're only a mini bell pepper. Got two plants at the back, which are in the orange pots there, a uh, yellow bell pepper. So I need to keep an eye on them. They might need to go in bigger pots. Just some more seedlings down in there. Some um, dwarf French beans that I might put in where the garlic is. Uh, right, where to now? Um, peas there, it's been battered by slugs and everything, so I might actually just use them and save them and let them go over and, and save the um, the peas for seeds next year. So, you know, I'll get enough seeds just off that little patch there to uh, to sow all my peas next year, probably. Uh, I've looked down here at the flowers. This is unlike me, from flowers. Lilies are dying back now. You know, the petals are all falling off. There's some flowers here, some Moulin Rouge, yes, same as what's at the allotment. They're not supposed to get that high. But I actually measured that this morning to the middle of that sunflower there from the ground. It's actually seven foot. I think they're only supposed to be about five to six. So I say there's two in the end of this bed and there's uh, Two in the end of the end of this bed. I mean, they've got a nice, uh, nice flower on them. It's not your usual sort of bright, happy yellow sunflower, you know. But well, that's not too bad, and they put plenty of heads out. So these lilies, I don't have to say I'm, I'm no good with flowers, to be honest. I'm not really a flower sort of uh, grower, but I think that's like a rust or something. Lily beetle's been about. Um, but like I say, this is, uh, this is my mum's bit really, all this. I mean, she needs to come out and uh, get rid of a few of these flowers because in these are, uh, these are petunias. That there isn't, that's a weed. Um, and then there are somewhere over there, some supposed to be Swiss giant pansies. If they are or not, I don't know, that's what it says on the seed packet. And at the back, 
which I was kind of hoping would come up this year, but they might not come up next year. These plants here, if send a flower spark up, they're uh, Sweet Williams. I don't mind them. And there's a snail, which uh, that can go away. Um, got a clematis here. It's probably about two, maybe three, three years old. Um, just trying up, just dragging it along. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing, you know, purple flowers on it. But they are fairly straightforward to grow. I mean, it's just buried in a lot of rubble and junk down there, and it's grown. It's just a case of bunching it all together late in the season. You know, at the end of the year, and it's died back a bit and just pull it along until you can lay it all along the bottom and then it, it just grows up through it. So I need to open it out again later this year and pull it all down to the bottom wire and that should be its final one then. It should uh, go full length each way. Uh, these are raspberries from the allotment that I dug up. That one seems to be looking quite healthy now. Um, others, you know, I've, I've lost a couple so I've only actually got three here but um, I'll persevere, it's just something else to do I suppose, just see if I can get some more plants off that one. Spring onions uh, in tubs, I need to start eating these. Still still harvesting from this thing, I've started just taking actual full plant now. Um, but done great in these trays, because I sold um, another three trays exactly 30 days ago. Uh, in one of my videos, which I've, uh, which are here. This is the actual tray I should, you know, I've, I um, did on the video, which I think it's fancy frills or something like that. So 30 days, here's a tray, and these are, what's this one called? Uh, Mescaline Mixed. These are all bad Johnson's, these seeds, and this one is. Just find a tag. Should be one of the corners. Typical last corner you're looking. Um, spectrum. So it looks like I've got something similar to like a, a pak choy in here. Some like soft leaf le uh, lettuce. You know, some sort of rockety type in. Uh, these look a bit like a mustard type of plant, to be honest, these. So, uh, so now I'm going to start uh, harvesting them. So I'll probably get, you know, a, a good couple of months out of these. Uh, what else we got? These are uh, hibiscus. They should start coming into flower soon because the buds are on. And then I have my brassicas, which are sort of ideally going to go where my first and second earlies are now. Uh, a quills broccoli, because I've had to keep these in the shade, they've gone a bit leggy. So I've got them out to give, let the wind knock them about a bit and it should sturdy them up a bit. Some uh, tundra, uh, sprouts which are called Doric, and then I've got some savoy cabbage. And then we've got cauliflower which is autumn giant, which I've never grown before, so we'll give that a go. But, uh, sweet peas, absolute mass of them you know they are starting to pod so the idea is this year I need to find out which colour each um, sort of try and follow it up because I want to try and save the actual colours so I can mix and match them next year um, you know if I've not been cross pollinated which is very likely you might have taken the lower ones you might be in with a chance then um, but yeah, it smells nice out here. Bees, bees are usually always all over them. Uh, Miesa, which is called uh, oh, Summit Crimson. So it's like a weeping willow anyway, uh, weeping Acer. Um It's starting to get a little bit of tip burn. But I like, I like, I like the look of these. Aces, are, they are nice. Some nasturtions in a tub. But yeah, so I'm not really one for growing flowers, but you know, I don't let the heads go proper dead if I pull them off because uh, I know a certain, uh, certain person who, who is likely to eat them. And that's uh, this fella down here. Which you all know, Kane. So, uh, 
but yeah he can eat petunias and pansies and nasturtiums probably eat anything that you put in front of him but uh, yeah he's been out grazing for a bit so I'm actually give him some veggies now which I've got down here ready oh uh, of course strawberries not supposed to have much fruit but I'll give him that in a minute so yes yeah, I mean this is just half of a this is one of the um, the cure lettuces that I grow from the lot and just cut it in half and then uh, he needs to have uh, calcium on his food as a supplement so it's just a case of let's give it a bit of a light dusting you know and uh, it's surprising what he can consume because he can eat a hell of a lot so that's the the cure lettuce so there's no finesse when giving him food he just simply launch it in I've got some endive uh, some spring greens chopped up carrots chopped the courgette so uh, and of course the strawberry if I put this down here because of the colour of it it probably go towards that because he does like strawberries a lot so like I said not supposed to have much fruit but as a treat I don't mind so yep yeah, for a 40 odd pound tortoise he's got an appetite all right so I just give him veggies like that and then the rest of the time they just um, graze on the grass so I'll leave him be because he'll be out here for a few hours eating all that lot and walking about so um, I think that's that's about it really for the garden so a bit of a longer video than I thought it'd be but you've seen everything that's going on in the garden I think I think I've covered everything so next video um, probably from the allotment in a couple of weeks um, cause I'm going fishing again not not same place but somewhere different but for a few days and that just a bit of time to chill out so uh, thanks for watching take care and I'll see you next time bye